Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. We are so excited to be here on this morning, this Sunday morning, for this is our second Focus on Your Family Sunday. So we hope that you will enjoy our service today wherever you are. We are excited today. It is also our first Sunday. So it is Communion Sunday. Just want to remind you all to get your sacraments so you will be ready when it is time for communion. We thank God and truly bless God because of who he is and for all that he has done. And our prayer and heart's desire is that you really enjoy this time that we you have being able to be home. But focus in on the words of God. And let's see what God has to say to you, for you, about you in this race that we have. You, God, you all be blessed. We love to see exactly what God wants to do in your life and through your life. Be blessed, saints. So again, thank you for joining us this morning. We hope that you all enjoy our service. And since this is our first Sunday, as I've mentioned, we will have communion on today. So I enjoy first Sundays because we can sing some of the traditional music that we used to sing long before praise and worship teams were a thing. So if you don't mind, come on and put your hands together. Bless the Lord with me on this Sunday. For it was down at the cross where our Savior died and we've come to praise him and thank him on today because he loved us enough to send his only son Jesus all the way to Calvary's cross to die for our sins. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. Down at the cross where my savior died down where for cleansing from sin i cried there to my heart was the blood of life singing glory to his name we're singing glory to his name precious name Singing glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. I'm singing glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, so sweet abides within it was there at the cross where he took me in I'm singing glory oh we're singing glory 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 to his name singing glory to his name was the blood of life i'm singing glory to his name it was down at the cross where my savior died down where for cleansing from sin i cried there to my heart was the blood of life Singing glory to his name. Oh, we're singing glory. 
glory to his name singing glory to his name oh was the blood I'm singing glory oh we're singing singing glory glory to his name singing glory hallelujah glory to his name was the blood of life i'm singing glory oh we're singing singing glory to his name singing glory Was the blood I'm singing there to my heart? I'm singing there. His cleansing blood. His soul saving blood. It was the blood. Was a blood there to my heart. Was the blood of life? I'm singing glory to His His name. Come on and put those hands together for the blood. Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. Bless Your name, God. Well, bless God, saints. Bless God. We thank God. We give him honor and praise for the time that we have just had in praise and worship. And thank God for my wife who gives an anointed praise and worship to us, guys. But what we're going to do, um, moving pretty quickly with what we have here, because it's your focus on your family. This is your weekend, and I want you to enjoy yourselves with your family. This is one thing that we do twice a year, as my wife said, and this is we're not in the sanctuary. So what we do is just have the saints to really enjoy yourselves in the things of God. In your holiday coming up, please be safe. Now, because we have started a brand new series, what I have decided to do is I'm going to wait till next week before I pick back up with our series because I want the people of God in the house of God to do these things. So what we're going to do is this is going to be pretty much, like I said, a one-off, if you will, and just go ahead and touch bases on something. So what I want to do, guys, if you would, if I was, if I was to title this, um, I would title this um, Fight the Devil from the High Ground. That's what I would tell you. Fight the devil from the high ground. And what is the high ground? So what we want to do is touch bases. We want to touch bases as to what the high ground is. So one thing I want to focus in on first, guys, is know the area that you are fighting in. You have to know the terrain that you are fighting. So establish your ground right up front. Before we get started and move forward, let us go before the throne of grace in prayer. Father, 
We honor you, bless you, and thank you for this opportunity you have given us to come before the throne of grace. Lord, I pray that you bless this service right now. Bless us that we may stay in thy word, Lord, and hear the spirit of God as he moves. Be merciful to us, Lord. Give us a renewed mind. Help us to stay focused on that, Lord God, what you call us to do. Remember, Lord God, the enemy as he raises his hands up against us, Lord. Give us wisdom in how to deal with him. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. Now, I believe by fair, Lord, I believe by faith that you have honored this request for our access in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so what we were saying, guys, if we're going to get into the Word of God and study, we're going to say, we're going to say to you, we want you starting out is um, dealing with, we said, know the area that you are fighting in. And see, when you know an area and things that sort, anytime you have um, teams that go to battle in sports, they have what they call the home field advantage. So there are some things that you know about your field because you practice on it, you play on it, you are there often. So every little nook and cranny about that field, you know it, which would be probably a hindrance to a visiting team. You have the advantage of it because you know this. Well, when the saints of God know the things of God and the word of God, you have an advantage advantage when it comes to dealing with the enemy because the enemy wants to take advantage of you. So the first thing we're going to establish when looking at these guys and knowing the ground that you're fighting on, you need to understand what God feel about this matter. And he says in Zechariah, Zechariah, um, Zechariah, the fourth chapter. And this is the word of God is saying, Zechariah four and five, the word says, and the angel and the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, knoweth thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So that's something we need to establish right out the gate is when you're in a battle zone and you're doing battle with the enemy, you need to know the area that you're fighting in. You do not go on the devil's ground. You stay on your ground and your ground, God says, is not by not might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. And so you need to know what is it that the spirit do battle with? What is he fighting with? So go with me to Ephesians. The word of God tells us on our battleground, we know where all of the weapons are at, for this is something we are accustomed to. And in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and I want you to drop down, if you will, Ephesians 6, and I want you to go to um, verse number 12. So we have established back with Zechariah, as God has said in his word, the angel saying, okay, do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're into? And so what he says is it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So what does the spirit of God has to say about the matter? Well, he says it in Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 17, um, sixth chapter and 12th verse. This is what he says. Establishing what you're in. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having thy loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you have seen God has already established with the ground that you are fighting on as a believer. He have already established that ground. First, he's telling you it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Then he says to you, take the helmet of salvation. After you put on the arm of God, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, do you see, saints, where your battleground is? Your battleground should always be the word of God. You stay with the word of God. You know the word of God. But if you're unfamiliar with your weapon, how then can you do battle with this enemy and win? Let me tell you something. A gun is a dangerous um, piece of, uh, piece of, if you would, a gun is a dangerous weapon if you know how to use it. But let me tell you something. A gun is a dangerous weapon even if you don't know how to use it. See, one thing about a gun, if you do not take the safety off of that gun, you have nothing but a, a heavy rock 
or a heavy um, piece of paperweight, if you will. But the moment you unlock that safety off that gun, now all of the power that that gun has or the potential things that the gun could do, you now have it access at your hands. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying when you unlock the safety, which is in the word of God, all of the authority and power that resides in the word of God, you as a believer have it at your hands. But one thing we find out that believers do not know. So the safety is on it and you are dealing with things and going through things that you ought not have to deal with or go through because you do not know the word of God. So God is telling you it's not about what you think. It's not about your emotions. It's not about what you feel because God has established via his word. God don't care about what we think. God don't care about what we hope and God don't care about what we believe. The word says it's not by might nor by power in Zechariah, but by my spirit. And what does the spirit deal with? The spirit deals with his word. So God's word is what's established with you and to you, established to you that you may be able to do whatever you need that God has called you to do and deal with whatever God allowed to come before you. But so many times we as believers have no idea what it is that God have authority that he has given us to do a thing or even what God has called us to do. We know more about TikTok. We know more about all of the social media apps. We know more about all of these things, but we don't know about the word of God. Saints, since, since today, I was um, spending time with a, a friend of mine on the job, and it was incredible. He showed me, it's football season here in America. And so he showed me, which is, you know, he showed me his fantasy football league, which a lot of people participate in. Oh, the time that he put in strategizing and learning the players and, and learning everything about it, who is weak and who is strong, where they're at, when should you trade? I was mesmerized by sitting and just listening to him, how he had color-coded his charts so he would know exactly what he's doing, who he's going after. He took time to learn about that because there was something of value at the end of it for him. Here's my question. When the last time you wrote in your Bible, or even if you have one that's on an um, electronic device, when have you highlighted a one in um, a scripture in color? See, the world take their sin serious. The world put everything in their sin, but we as believers, we do not do this thing. We take it for granted. Oh, ho harm! God gave His word again. Guys, do you not understand? That is the authority and the power that you can deal with this enemy with. You need to know the area that you are fighting in. You need to understand that. So now that we have established the area that we are fighting in, we need to understand now. We need to know the weapon we are fighting with. We know the area that we are fighting in. Let's know the weapon that we are fighting with because the area that we are fighting in is a spiritual war. It's a spiritual world and it's a spiritual war that we're in. So what we need to do now is now that we understand it is a spiritual world, the devil don't care about you crying. The devil don't care about you getting mad and feeling sorry for yourself. He glees and takes joy when he sees you crying and when you are down and out. He enjoys that. So what you need to do is learn, even if you don't took a blow, how to stand firm. Because what the devil gets nervous about is your faith. That's what causes him a problem. And that's the awesome weapon you have that God is giving you. So when you get into the word of God and God is telling you now that we have established, you need to know the area that you're in. God wants you to know the weapon that you are dealing with. So go with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew, the fourth chapter. Go with me to Matthew, the fourth chapter. We have already established God don't care about what none of us think, feel, hope, or believe. We know that God only cares about what? His word. The only thing God cares about is his word. So let's see what the word says to us. Let's see what the word says for us. Let's see what the word has given us to deal with. Let's see what weapon we have in the word. Because this weapon, once we know how to use it properly, we can do much damage to this enemy. And I want you guys to be very, very aware of the weapon you have and how to use it. And so we find here, guys, in Matthew, the fourth chapter. Let's deal with a few things here. It's Matthew, the fourth chapter. This is what it says, verse number one. It says, then was Jesus led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, why would the Holy Spirit do that? Why would he lead God into the wilderness? Well, ask yourself the question, why would he take you into troublesome times? See, let me tell you something. Your life was bought with a price. My life was bought with a price. 
So what we have to learn to do is live within the realm which God has given us. Quit murmuring and complaining about some of the things that we face. God is a just God. I assure you, he has already given you, he has already given me his word. And that word is he will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. But in all ways, he will, he will provide a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. So what we have to do is focus in on what has God told us to do. And so when you're looking here, he says, then was Jesus led of the spirit into the wilderness. The wilderness is a hard place. And why would God lead you into a hard place? Because there are people in a hard place and they're lost. And sometimes God have to send light down in darkness to get the people out. But so many times we as believers want to be a light with other light and that light is not good at all. It's not, e it's not effective enough when light is with light. Light works best when it is in darkness. You take your flashlight out at 12 noon on a high day when the sun is shining and then turn your flashlight on and see what value you get from that flashlight. But then you take that same flashlight and it's now 12 midnight and turn that flashlight on and see what you get from that flashlight. And so that's what you find right here. Jesus said, that word is saying Jesus was led of the spirit. That means God is with you. When you go down into a tough time, what is that wilderness? You may have lost your job. You may have gotten a bad report from the doctor. Your kids may have went and went crazy. Your car may be acting up. It doesn't matter. In the wilderness, God is with you. Why was you led into the wilderness? The word says to be tempted of the devil. God want to know everything. I don't care what school you go to. What God wants to know is this. Have you studied for your test? No matter what school you go to, a teacher teaches and teaches and teach. But at the end of the year, the teacher got to make sure you have learned what it was that the teacher has taught you. So what does the teacher do? The teacher constantly tests you throughout the year so that you will be prepared for the big test at the end. It makes no difference. You talking and talking and talking. And people doesn't get what you're talking about. That's why I say here, it is not about the quantity. It's about the quality. So if we only stay with one or two things and you get an understanding from those one or two things, I'd rather do that than to give you a whole chapter that you have not even, you're throwing it up. So that's what Jesus is saying here. In the tough times, God is with you because sometimes God going to take you in the tough times because it's a job he wants you to do. There is somebody that's stuck into something that you thought you would never be in. God wants you to go down in that world to bring them out because God sent somebody to get you. And so what we have to do is trust God during that time. So we know that God is with us in the midst of it all. And he says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungry. Now, do you see what it was? Jesus was preparing himself. Here's my question. Are you starving your flesh? And feed the spirit. See, fasting feeds the flesh. I'm mean, say fasting, what you're doing is you're starving the flesh, but you're feeding the spirit. So when you're fasting, the, the, the natural man gets weak, but the spiritual man gets strong. See, there's a war that is going on, and your natural man, when he is full and everything feels good, the natural man is hard-headed and don't listen. But when God has pent that natural man down via fasting and praying and spending time with him, the spiritual, the natural man can't do much. Now the spiritual man is dominating. Sad to say so many saints spend so much time feeding the natural man and starving the spiritual man. And the people in the world can see it. You a three watt bulb in an otherwise dark time. It's dim. God says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So this is what he has established. God is sending you into a rough place, building you up for the purpose, telling you to build yourself up in your most holy faith. So when you get there, you can be an example for God's righteousness. Now, look at verse number three. We want to focus in the first part right here in the battle, because all of this time you have built yourself up in the word of God. And now you're going into a troubled time, meaning you're ready for this. Now the enemy is coming. It says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if I be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The devil says, okay, what's the problem? You have given God his time. You have fasted. You have done some praying. 
So command that these stones be made bread. Listen, once you have a close walk with God, it is not for you to abuse that power. It is not for you to abuse what it is that God has called you to do. So you can see in verse number three, the devil came and the first thing he tried to do is he tried to slither in up under the radar. It's harmless. You don't gave God his time. Now, why don't you go ahead and command that these stones be made bread? Listen, because you spent some time in fasting and praying and spending some time before God and studying the word of God and God gives you some fresh manner to you. It is not for you to run around and try to speak as you some powerful per, um, preacher of the word of God or some deep person that only God give you information that you can be glorified. You stay humble before God that God stays glorified. See, when you are growing in Christ, that meaning your natural man is dying, but your spiritual man is growing. And so what God is saying, that's the thing. The devil tell him to abuse the power which God has given you. God has given me a lot of authority and power as a pastor. And I can abuse that power if I choose to, as so many do. But I choose not to. Because to abuse the power that God has given me is to abuse the authority that God has given me. You're abusing God's people and you will pay for that. So look at what he is saying there. So he's telling you right there in verse number three, he says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thy be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But listen at the response. Jesus, he says, but he answered and said, it is written. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Let me tell you something. It is not your job to try to figure this thing out. It's God's. Man should not live by bread alone. What was Jesus doing? See, the devil asked him something flat out, but Jesus respond in a certain way. See, the world is going to throw something at you. How you respond is how God is going to reward you. So Jesus is minding his business. The devil came and said what he said, but the first thing Jesus said is, it is written. What was Jesus saying? I want you to go with me real quick to the book of Deuteronomy, all the way near the front of the Bible, in the first five books of the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, this is what the Bible says. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Listen to verse number one. This is what Jesus was saying when the devil said to him, command that these stones be made bread. You don't gave God his time. You don't did this. Thing. I want you to command that God, um, um, command that these stones be made bread. Surely God going to reward you for all the suffering you don't did, not eating. See, he's trying to get him on his grounds. He's trying to entice Jesus to come off of the ground, off of the holy ground and get on his ground. And when you get on the devil's ground without God's authorization, you already don't lost that fight. But listen what the word says here. This is what Jesus was saying. This is what Jesus was quoting. He says, in all the commandments which I have commanded thee in commanded thee this day shall thou observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. That thou shall that thou shall remember all the that thou shall remember all the way which the Lord the Lord thy God led thee led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to provoke thee to know to know what was in thy heart whether thou would have keep his commandments or no and. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knoweth not, neither did thy father knoweth, that he may make thee know that he may make thee know that man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of mouth of the Lord doeth man live. So do you see what Jesus was saying here? See, Deuteronomy, if you don't know, was written before Matthew, many years before Matthew. So the devil came to Jesus and tried to pull him off the ground and get into his feelings because after fasting, I'm sure Jesus was hungry. And when you get hungry, because he was tempted, the word says, in all manner like us. So if you're by fasting a number of days, he's tired, he's sleepy, he's grouchy. What's the word they say? He's hangry, hungry and angry at the same time. But you notice he stayed on the grounds which God gave him. It is written. He stayed with the word of God. It is written to know that God will provide your every need. God is saying here in his word, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to uh, make sure you eat. When you didn't know what food was going to come from, when you did not know how ways were going to be made, you could see God fed them with manna. You did not know where manna come from, neither did your fathers, because nobody never seen it before. So God says, even because you don't know it, 
as the saying goes, all you know is not all there is to know. You don't know what God is going to do. You don't know how God is going to do it. You don't know which great God is going to bring you out. All you know is God has said already, I shall provide your every need. So just know whatever it is you're facing. There's no need for you crying about it. Start rejoicing and thanking God about it. God already knows about it and will assure you that you will surely come through. So God is established right there that I'm going to take care of you. Don't you get on the devil's ground with trying to think about this thing emotionally or from a mental aspect. God, you just say what God say, say, and God will bring you through every single time. So you can see right there, that's what Jesus was saying right there in verse number um. Verse number four, Jesus was saying, man, um, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You may not know where it's coming from, but I can assure you this one thing. God has already made provisions for you. God has already made the provisions for you. Look at verse number five. It says, then the devil took him up into, a, into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, it, and he said, said unto him, if thy be the son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in thy hands thy shall bear thee up, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Now, you can see what took place is the devil understood the grounds now that they were fighting on. And so what the devil said was, okay, that's the ground you're going to fight on. I know some of this ground too. So the devil jumped into the word of God. That's what he was doing right there in the sixth chapter, um, sixth verse. He says, he says, and he said unto him, if thy be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his, and see, see the devil said what Jesus said. See, you about to know sometimes and the people out there, they know the Bible too. You about to not only be quoting the Bible, but you about to know the Bible. And so the devil started quoting it back at him. He says, um, it is, um, son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands thy, in thy hands thy shall bear thee up, lest not at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. What he is saying is, okay, since you saying you the child of God, uh, jump. Now, why was the devil telling him that? I want you to prove to me that you are the son of God. Well, I'll show you why. First of all, go with me to Psalms, to Psalms, the 34th chapter, Psalms 34. And you will see exactly what the devil was saying because the devil was saying to Jesus, you saying that you are, a ch you are the son of God. So God has already a word for his child. So in Psalms 34 and drop down to verse number 19, this is what the devil was saying. He says, this is what the devil says. What the word says, many of the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord deliver him out of them all. The specific him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. So the devil saying jump. If you are the child of God, jump. Because I can assure you this one thing. If you jump, if you're the child of God, God going to take care of you. Because he keeps heels. He keeps all of him. Not one of his bones is broken. And there's no way you can jump from this height and something not break. But Jesus responded via the word because the devil was abusing the word. You have some people that will quote something out of the Bible to make it say what they wanted to say in abuse to the word of God. But Jesus corrected him by straightening out what God is saying here. And so when Jesus said, no, 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 go back to Deuteronomy, Satan. You know this as well as I do because you was there. You seen it when God gave these commandments to the people. So in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, Deuteronomy the 6th chapter, we don't went from 8, let's go back to 6. And this is what he says, Deuteronomy the 6th chapter. And this is what Jesus says, no, 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 no. See, you're telling me to jump because uh, I can prove myself because if I jump, nothing is going to break. But this is what Jesus says. He says, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God amongst you. He says, let's, let's, he says let the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. He says, ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye temp tempted him in messing. So what God is saying, what he's saying in that, you begin to see y'all tempted me. You thought I was not going to take care of you. You thought I was not going to bring you through. 
Why did you tempt me? I'm a jealous God. Look into somebody else to provide for you what God wants to provide for you. How many times do you find believers compromise their word and stand with God because they want a job? Thinking that the job is the provider of you. Compromise themselves and give their name up or give the name of God up because they want to hang out with somebody. They want to be with the in crowd. How many times have people come? you making God jealous. Why? Because God says, I'm going to provide for you. I know what your bills are. I know what you need. I know what you are going through. All God asks us to do is to be obedient to his word, his law and his way. And if you do that, you will find out that God will bring you through God will bring you out. God just wants you to depend on him. Oh, nothing makes God more proud of when all of the odds are against you and you still make it up in your mind, I'm going to wait right here on my God because I know he's not going to let me down. It doesn't matter. One thing my kids know, they know it doesn't matter where they at. If something is going wrong and they're in a bad situation, they know one thing from their heart that mama and daddy are on their way. And our kids can believe that much about us. Why can't you believe that much about the father? that God don't love you enough that he's going to come wherever you're at. So the devil misquoted the word. Jesus straightened it out and quoted the word properly for him. It is not for me to tempt God. God already said what he's going to do. My job is to obey what he said. My job is to do what God has told me to do. My job is to live according to how God has told me to live. Yeah, I may lose my job for standing for righteousness, but the job is nothing but a resource. God himself is the source. So if they say you fired, God says, good, I'm going to give you a promotion. But you have so many people, their job is their source. Their, their status is their source. Their name is their source. But if all that passed away, God says, no, I'm right there with you. So Jesus corrected this thing again by telling Satan, no, 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 no. You are misusing what God has set before you. Let's try this one more time, Satan, because Satan is sitting right there trying to deal with this and cause havoc there. And he says here, guys, again, again, he's telling you, junk, God going to take care of you. He says, then Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And we straighten it out. That's what he was saying in Deuteronomy. But the devil came back and says, again, the devil took him up, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain. First, he just took him up on a hill and said, look at the city. I'll give you all these things if you fall down and worship me. And let me tell you, the devil could have given Jesus all that because God created the world. He gave it to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, when they went into sin, they gave it to the devil. And that's why when Jesus came, he said, if this was my land, I would fight for it. So Jesus is saying, yes, yeah, it's Satan because he, he have the right to it because of sin. But God going to come back and claim his land. And so what Jesus is saying, again, the devil took him into an exceeding high mountain, a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and all of its glory and said unto him, all these things would I give thee if I will fall down and worship me. We just established the devil could give it because it was given to him. But the devil had a trick up his sleeve. Because if Jesus would have fell down and worshiped the devil and the devil gave him all of those things, then Jesus still would have been subversive to him because he fell down and worshiped him. You got it from me. You got it from me. If it's something that you don't have and you get it from someone, that means they are in a greater place than you. So you're admitting the devil is greater and you're going to him for your provision. You're going to him for these things. And Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. What Jesus was quoting was in Exodus. Exodus, the 20th chapter. The Ten Commandments. Quickly, I will go to this, and here's where we will close, saints. In Exodus, the 20th chapter, you can see Jesus was telling Satan and dealing with him. You're telling him to worship you. Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. Because the word says, again, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Exodus 20 and 1, it says, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Let me ask you a question. Let me put before you something. Who is it that you trust in? Who is it that you believe in? 
Who is it that you look to before you look to God? You may say, no, I look to God first and foremost. I don't worry about nothing else. Is that a true statement? If you got word that something showed up on your mammogram or something showed up in your exam, your exam what you went to, and it doesn't look good, do you fall all apart? Or do you sit still to see what the Lord is going to do? See, the word says, whose report shall you believe? And in order for you to have a choice of reports, that means there has to be two reports. So when the devil says this, God says this. How can we say God is a healer when nobody is never sick that God can heal them? Sometimes God will let you go down to the bottom because it's something he wants the world to see him do through you. So my question is this. Back to the question at the top. Is your job your source? And as God beginning to show you things and you beginning to look to this world or the things of this world to validate who you are, God says you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. There is none other like you. God cares deeply for you. What you need to do is trust God every step of the way because that final verse says, the devil saw that he was solid in the word and the devil left him alone. Do the devil con continuously harassing you or do he see that you have did your homework by studying the word of God and the devil back off because he know not only do you have the weapon, but you know how to use it. Oh, dear saints, learn this, that God may be able to work on your behalf because God is not going to be moved by you crying and yelling and throwing a temper tantrum. God is at the ready to move according to his word. So when you say, thus says the Lord, the angels can then go to work. Know the word of God. Know what God has told you. And I assure you, God will deliver you and bring you through. You be blessed, saints. Father, we thank you for the time that we have had via your word. We thank you for the door that you have opened and the way that you have made. Oh, Father, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus that you bless us, that we may not let the word slip, Lord, but that we may take this word and abide it, Lord God. We may hide it in our hearts and abide in it. Oh, Father, Help us that we may not in any way, form, or fashion walk away from that which you have given us, but that we may stand in obedience and do that, Lord God, which you have put before us and grow in you. Now, for doing this for us, Lord, we are careful to give your name to praise. For this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit that he may deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, let me ask you a question. I want you to stay with us. Now, I'm going to go through this portion of the service, but then we're going to follow with communion. We're going to follow with communion. And so I want to ask, is there anyone out there who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior? If you're that person, I have good news. I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. You may even be one that once knew him as your Lord and Savior and you turned and walked away. And now you would like to rededicate your life to him that you may be in right standing with God. Good. I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is before me. I ask you, Father, to forgive me for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Jesus, if you would forgive me, I would choose to follow you the rest of the days of my life. Jesus, I ask you to be King of kings and Lord of lords in my life. I make this open confession that Jesus, you are my Lord. I make this open confession that I repent of my life of sin and I choose to live according to God's word. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. I believe by faith you have honored and granted this request. For I ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, I say welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, you may wonder, what am I do now that I've given my life to Christ and gotten saved? Well, it's simple. You get in a good Bible-believing church and live thereby. Live by the word of God. 
You may say, I'm not sure of one of these yet. Or I have been wounded right now and I'm just not there. Well, stay here with us and we continue teaching you the word of God and grow according to God's word, law, will, and way. You will say, okay, now that I've done this, I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South. You can go right there on the website and you can see all of that information where you can Google and come and visit us. We thank God truly for you. We thank God for you via the word. Now, what we're going to do, with that said, we have um, prepared ourselves again in that portion. We have walked through. Now, what we're going to do now is take the word of God and let's prepare ourselves for communion. Let's prepare ourselves for communion that we may be able to walk according to God's word. Whatever it is, be it some bread, some water, some juice, a cracker, it doesn't matter. But what we want to do is we want to prepare ourselves. Go with me, if you will, to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. I'm going to read this to you. I want you to listen, saints. Listen to what's being said. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go back and we're going to observe the ceremony, okay? So what I want you to do is listen to what God is saying here. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, down to verse number 23, hearken unto God's word, it says, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament, in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to themselves, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Now that we have established this, saints, let's go through this ritual together and observe this ritual before God and man. Again, what we want to do is I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to pray before we move that God may just take this moment and examine all of us that if anything we have done that is not pleasing to him, we're able to be in right standing with God. This moment of cleansing, that's what this moment is for, to get it right with God, that we can come before the throne of grace and holiness. So take a moment. We go before God. In a moment of silence, a time of reflection and repentance.
Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you for this, this moment that we have had, Lord, to be able to reflect on our lives. If there's anything, Lord God, thy saints have done that is not pleasing to thee, Lord, please forgive us that we may be able to be in right standing. This, Lord God, this ritual, Lord, is necessary for the believer, for strengthening us, Lord, as we walk according to your word. So if there's anything that we have done that is totally unpleasing to you, Lord, forgive us, Lord, that we may get in right standing and get in line with your word. Oh, Father, bless us that we may continue to, Lord God, look to you and trust you, Father, knowing, Lord, that your will will have its way in our lives. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. I believe by faith that you have honored this request for our access, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, saints, as we go through this together, here's what the word says. Again, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse number 23. Paul speaking, saying, For I have received of the Lord, which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, Father, we thank you for this portion of this ceremony. I pray, Lord, that you sanctify this bread, that it is a representative, Lord, of your body and all the potency, Lord God, that came through your body being beat for us. Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you for it. He says, and when he had given thanks, he take it and break it and said, take, eat, for this is my body, which was broken for thee. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. Lord, we thank you for this portion of the ceremony. This juice that represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed for us. Lord, we ask you to sanctify this, Lord, that the same cleansing power that the blood of Jesus had, that this may have, Lord, for it's the faith that we have in the blood that cleanses us. This is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take, drink. Now I need you to take a moment in silence, just one moment in silence. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for the ceremony, Lord, that we was able to take part of. The same, Lord God, potency and power that it had the day, Lord God, of the event, we have that today. Because you are a timeless God. And so we thank you, Father, for your door you have opened for us. And we stand by faith, Lord, and walk according to your word. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. We bless you. And we honor you, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
for you. Way back on Calvary, it was the blood that gives you your strength from Anything, guys, you know that God has already spoken to you about it. If you want to be a giver, you can already see that there. And if you want to be a part of the family, it's a simple thing. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? If you believe that and you're willing to obey the rules and regulations of this ministry, so as long as it lines up with the Word of God, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry. We love to see you here and see your face. And if we cannot, just let us know that we can celebrate with you. You guys be blessed. We love you in Jesus' name. From day to you all in Jesus name. We look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel, Wednesday nights, 7 p.m., Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. You be blessed in Jesus name.